Hi, my name is Alexa Alvarez. Uh, today is July 19th, 2020, and we are working on our, exper our lab two, which is uh, aseptic techniques and culturing microbes. And this is my card. Okay. So part of what we had to do within this experiment is we uh, created uh, microcultures using um, yeast. We used um, a staph bacteria and well, it's epidermiditis. And then we used E. coli. Um, so what we originally did is we created it within broth solutions. Um, we created a solution. We added the bacteria within each test tube and each test tube was labeled and we had to incubate that for a few days um, just to have the microbes within the cultures grow or within the solution hopefully grow. <laughs> and um, after that, after a couple days, we then had to create um, agar dishes and each of our dishes are labeled. As you can kind of see down here, we have three different um, cultures that we smeared. And using inoculation um, loops, we went ahead and we created um, smears of the cultures. So um, I think probably a little bit easier to see on this one how we utilized the four quadrants of the petri dishes and um, these actually had to incubate for a couple days so some of what I noticed was on my E. coli dish probably had the most growth um, I want to say that's kind of expected um, just to have had seen as much growth as there was. Um, one thing I was noticing um, was I feel like within the first uh, two smears or two um, spreads, I want to say I might have not, I, I know I sanitized it with alcohol, however, it's a very similar smear. I would have expected to have had seen some change like we did down here and off to the side. Um, but they look very similar. So I wanna say I probably smeared most of what was up on this side down to the second. Um, so I feel like that's why on this one, it looks pretty consistent. There isn't really much of a difference. Um, on the epidermiditis, um, you can't really see the smears that I did. However, there is quite a bit of growth throughout the Petri dish. Um, which is quite, in, quite interesting. I was expecting to see something like the E. coli, um, but it actually came out to be um, more of the round bacteria growth. Um, and just up here, so what I ended up doing when I was doing the smears is where I initially started my writing, that's where I started my first quadrant and I worked myself, I worked um, clockwise. So um, I know for sure I got a good smear up here. Um, doesn't look like I got much of anything down here. Um, so this is quite interesting. Um, on our yeast solution, um, on this one, the smears, there is a little bit of growth. However, I feel like not much. So you can kind of see where it kind of looks a little hazy. I know it's hard to see with the writing, but you can kind of see the haze around the first, uh, yeah, first, second, and third quadrant. But it looks like I didn't even do anything on this side, which now I did because I was working my way around. Unless I maybe missed it, but um, I can't see really much of anything, any type of growth or residue over on the fourth quadrant. Um, so in terms of my results, um, I feel like they were quite successful. Um, like on my first experiment that we did for this week, um, I did have some issues with growth initially. And um, 
I feel like the, the results out of these were a little bit more promising just because there was a lot more to look at within the first 24 hour period. So I find that it was a little bit of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a little bit of a consolation prize just because my first experiment didn't really go as planned. <laughs> um, so yeah, other than that, um, this particular experiment was quite easy, I want to say. I, I didn't really find a challenge in terms of, um, in terms of creating the solutions, um, diluting, not diluting, but um, putting them in broth. My only concern was I overused the first packet of yeast, so I'm probably gonna have to go buy some more of that so I don't run out by throughout the term. Um, other than that, I think that's all I have. Thank you so much.